Hello folks, and welcome to these Doom Devlogs. I'll be your host Andrew, and in this episode we'll be going through what the game is, how you play it, and what kind of stuff we're going to be adding to the game before Closed Alpha, which you can sign up for uh, by heading to thesedoomedisles.com. As a bit of a disclaimer before we get into it, this game is still in pre-alpha, so you're going to be seeing uh, an awful lot of placeholder art like this and this, and this. Uh, so please just do your best to ignore that stuff. So what the hell is these doomed isles? Well, it's a survival city builder where you're doing all the regular city buildery stuff like uh, chopping down trees for wood and building buildings and, you know, fishing fishers. But in the game you're a god, so you actually just start out with a tiny island, four followers and a shrine and you'll have to do all the work of creating the land to build on, growing the trees for your followers to cut down, creating the fish for your followers to eat, and increasing the population of your island, however that happens. There is one tiny little thing that I've not mentioned yet. These Doomed Isles is also a deck builder. Instead of your regular building menus, you'll have to craft a deck of cards to be able to put down the buildings that you want, as well as use all of those cool god powers. I uh, particularly enjoyed deck builders where there's a physical space to play in. So you're managing the space and complexity on the board as well as the efficiency of your deck. This just takes that to an extreme, really. I also wanted to get away from that feeling in city builders where you know that almost every building you can build will need to be built at some point. I wanted to make something where the challenges you face and the options that you have to deal with those challenges can change quite drastically from run to run. Now... Andrew, I hear you saying, that's all well and good, but how do you actually play the game? Well, the goal of the game, the way that you win, is to answer the prayers of your followers. I mean, you are a god after all. And here you can see some of the ugly placeholder art that I mentioned earlier. These prayers increase in difficulty when you complete them, but you complete 12 and you are a winner. You can ignore a prayer, but that'll cost you faith to do so. Faith is one of your resources, which you can see here at the top of the screen. You have population here, uh, who become workers once they've got a house, and then they can be assigned to different buildings uh, that you're going to be building. Happiness is next, which can be affected by homelessness, unemployment, and taxation, amongst other things. Uh, that's easily fixed by getting your population drunk or feeding them pies, just like real life. Uh, although there will be more solutions by the time we get to closed alpha. Food is for feeding followers. Uh, if you don't have enough food or happiness is too low, you'll start losing followers. If you lose all of your followers, you lose the game. You also lose the game if your main shrine is destroyed. Wood and stone is for building stuff, although stone isn't actually implemented yet. We are planning to test more building resources, uh, things such as like uh, clay and iron ore that can then be refined into more useful materials, but we, we've not got onto that yet. Gold is used for some buildings and cards, but it's also the resource that you use for buying cards during the harvest market that appears once a year. Lastly, we have faith, which is used for your god power cards, such as placing land or forests or uh, firing meteors from the sky. Faith is also used to draw more cards, uh, although the amount of faith this costs increases each time that you use it, and it's often better to save those redraws for when you know you're going to need it. The game is turn-based, with every turn representing a season, You'll have a harvest in autumn, which is when you can buy more cards for your deck. And here is where gold comes in handy. You only get to visit this screen once a year, so it's important to plan ahead and pick up the cards that are going to be the most useful over the next four turns. You'll get at least one new follower every spring, because that's when humans have babies, right? As your population grows, the number of babies each year can grow too, so it's important that you have a good infrastructure ready to support your growing population. Or you can let them starve, like some kind of Dickensian villain. The last thing you need to consider is that you need to defend your settlement from raiders who will attack in waves, initially every two years, although the frequency increases a little towards the end of a run. Uh, I'm not going to show you too much of this as there's only one enemy type at the moment. That's one of the things we're planning on working on next though. So I guess now would be a good time to move on to the third and final part of this devlogue. The stuff we're going to be doing to the game before we go into the closed alpha. First off, new enemies. 
There's only one enemy type currently in the game uh, and it's relatively simple to deal with. Our plan is to try and use different enemy types uh, and setups to cause you different challenges through your run and give you setbacks that you have to recover from. Um, we also want to make sure that you can use different strategies to best deal with the different types of enemies that you're going to be coming up against. There are nine different variables that we're using to differentiate enemies. We've got their attack strength, their health, their movement per turn, their attack range and attack pattern, uh, like whether it's um, an AOE attack or a ranged attack. Uh, their attack side effects, for example, uh, an AOE that causes unhappiness. Uh, their movement restriction, for example, they can only move onto an empty tile, can only move on sea tiles, or they can fly. Uh, the number of units per wave. And the target priorities. Certain enemies may target your food production. Others may target your gold production and storage. Others might just go straight for your main shrine. Weaknesses and resistances. Uh, attacks will be given a type such as fire, sharp, electrical, blunt. You will also be given cards that can apply specific weaknesses to enemies. Some examples of enemies that could be created using these um, variables is, I mean, the game is themed around sort of uh, Celtic and Norse mythology. So you've got like, for example, uh, yeah, Banshees, a medium number of units, quite weak attacks, but their AOE causes unhappiness. You could have uh, Jotun, like very small number of units, perhaps even just one, but they are massive, high damage, high health, slow movement. Then, for example, you could have locusts or locust folk who attack your food storage and uh, food creation, causing you a, a major problem if you've not got the resources and defences to deal with them. Uh, in terms of the defences that are available to you, we are also planning to add uh, quite a lot more around that. The plan is to ensure the enemy, well, each enemy type has a different number of potential solutions that you can use, right. perhaps an optimal one, and you know various other options with a bit of crossover so you can tailor your strategies to work for yourself. Currently, there's only the Archer's Tower, the Lightning, the Meteors, and Earthquake, as well as the Military Academy, which you can use to make your Archer's Towers more powerful. Um, but aside from more God Powers, uh, more tower types and stronger wall types. We're going to be adding um, some new types of defences, such as um, mercenaries, which are uh, will come in different shapes, like the trees or uh, the land pieces, and they will cost you gold per turn, up to a maximum number of turns. If you can't pay them, they're going to go away. But on the bright side, if they die, they're not your problem. Uh, conscripts is another option. Now, if these do die, they are your problem because they will be pulled from your followers. It also means you can't have them working on the farms or, you know, wherever else you need them. They don't cost gold per turn, though, so, you know, depends what's more important to you, money or life. Another system that we're planning on adding is guilds. Currently, as there are only a small percentage of the planned cards in the game, they're all unlocked from the start of the game and are broadly weighted for how powerful they are and how often you need them. For example, the cabin card will appear a lot more frequently during the harvest than the windmill or lightning cards. Guilds are buildings that you can build to increase the chances of getting the higher level cards in your harvest. For example, every builder's guild that you build will increase the chances of drawing a stone house over a cabin and then a brick house over a stone house when it's in the game. Every farmer's guild will increase the chances of you drawing the more advanced food buildings, such as the windmill, pie shop, bakery, etc. Buildings that can multiply or improve the yield of other food producing tiles. Every preacher's guild will increase the chances of drawing stronger destructive god powers. So the reason to use this over a more standard tech tree is the focus of these doomed dials is managing the complexity and efficiency of your deck as well as the complexity and efficiency of the board itself. So making you build your own tech tree on the island really plays into that, forcing you to think about how you're using your space and where you're putting buildings and how they interact with the buildings around them. Well, I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like down below so I know that you liked it and you want to see more. 
If you have any questions, pop them down in the comments. I'd be more than happy to answer anything, almost anything. If you haven't already, please head on over to the Steam page and wishlist these Doom Dials. It makes a massive difference and can really help the game be a success. Thank you, and until next time, bye-bye.